Hi, it's John from Android Alex, and this is a quick benchmark test between the Exynos 2100 and the Snapdragon 888. So these phones have both had the April update installed, and I'm just going to go through the benchmarks here and we'll just see how they get on. So I'm going to put on the screen the previous results that we've had with these two phones. So the first set of results are what we had without any kind of cooling, and the second lot of results are when we had an active cooler attached to the phone. So the best results we had from the Exynos were 1086 for the single core and 3243 for the multi-core score. That was with the cooler running. And also for the Snapdragon is a bit different. The single core was better without the cooler, funnily enough, at 1078. But with the cooler, the multi-core score went all the way up to 3406. So as these April updates have apparently had improvement in performance, as well as the March update that came before it, it'll be interesting to see whether the improvements are reflected in the scores at all. So I'm just gonna let the test carry on and we'll skip to the end and we'll see how they get on. Okay, so the results are quite interesting. We've got better scores all around, which is great to see. So the single core has increased by 35 on the Exynos and the multi has gone up a huge amount here by nearly 300 points. So that's nice to see. Similar results for the Snapdragon as well. We've got an increase of about 32 for the single core and the multi score has gone up a huge amount here from the 2,957 all the way up to 3,444. So that's really uh, nice to see. So if you wanna have a look at any of the results here, I'm just gonna scroll through them quickly. Okay, next up we have the Compute Benchmark. So last time the Exynos really smashed the Snapdragon out of the park here with 7,516, that was its best score. Even with the active cooler enabled, it uh, didn't perform as well as that, so that was quite interesting. The Snapdragon last time got 4,749 for its Compute score, so hopefully it has increased a bit since then. Okay, so quite interesting results here. They've both actually decreased in the score. So we've gone from 7516 on the Exynos down to 7228. And on the Snapdragon, we've gone from 4749 all the way down to 4562. So again, I'm just gonna scroll through the scores here and you can just have a quick look at the results in more detail. And then we're gonna move on to the Antutu test. Okay, time for the Antutu test now. So in our previous test, the Exynos managed a score of 601,087 and the Snapdragon hit it out the park with a score of 664,484. So let's see how they both get on now. We're running the latest 9.0.3 version of Antutu. So let's see how they get on. Right, so here we have it. The results are amazing, really. I'm quite impressed with both phones here. So the Exynos has gone from, like I said, 601,000. Uh, at its peak, it was 634,000 with the active cooler. But 601,000 without the cooler on, and it's now gone up to 711,000, which is astonishing, I think is the only word I can describe it. So the Snapdragon has also increased massively by around... 80,000 points compared to the previous results of 664,000. Now I did manage 681,000 with the cooler, but without it, I mean, this is just absolutely amazing to see. I'm, uh, I'm still in shock, really. So CPU scores here, we can see the Snapdragon taking the lead a bit there. GPU-wise, though, interestingly, it's not a massive gap anymore. There's, uh, what, 2,000? Well, less, no, less than 2,000, about 13... 12, 1300 points difference here 
in the GPU scores. So we have a look at the temperature and battery drainage here. We can see the Exynos increased by 10 degrees and the Snapdragon by 12. And the Snapdragon also lost an extra percent of battery during the test, but it did indeed get a higher score. So yeah, really impressive results there. So that's definitely seen an improvement compared to the February update. So yeah, very happy with that. So the other test I did recently was the stress test. So I'm just gonna go through that again on both phones and I'll set it off now. It's a 15 minute test. So I'm just gonna skip straight to the end of the test to get the results and we'll just see how they do. Okay, so some rather interesting results here from the stress test. So as we know last time, the Exynos was being throttled quite a lot and we didn't even get up to three gigahertz or just below three gigahertz for its single core. And that still seems to be the case and it is still hovering around that sort of area for the most part. But now we can actually see it's been throttled quite clearly in these other areas here. So we can see here that the slowest performing cores are running at about 1.3, 1.4 gigahertz here. I'm guessing that is as the temperature rose up, it did then start, yeah, we can see here, it almost directly correlates with the temperature hitting just over 40 degrees. The throttling came in and it's, uh, it's quite severe in comparison to the previous test. So they have obviously done some work here in the throttling department. So I don't know if the throttling team are watching this video, but uh, it'd be nice if you just stopped doing this. So if we have a look at the Snapdragon, however, very similar to last time, where we can see the cores get maxed out at their best values possible. So we have the 2.84 gigahertz core here. We have the 2.42 gigahertz core here, or the cores, I should say. And then we have the four 1.8 gigahertz cores as well. A few little dips here and there, but nothing to worry about. We can see even though this did get actually hotter than the Exynos, there was no throttling involved and it performed as expected. CPU performance wise, we can see we hit 100% once on the Exynos and then it was just hanging around, cool, pretty poor here, isn't it? Around 70% I'd say as an average. And then as the throttling kicked in even more, we've gone down to about 45%, 50% maybe. CPU performance. So that's really looking worse than it was last time. The Snapdragon, however, is looking much better here. We're hitting 100% a lot more often, which is nice that you can get the maximum out of it that uh, it allows. Even if it does get a tiny bit hotter, it doesn't seem to affect the performance. Okay, I'm going to let the phones cool down a tiny bit now, and then we're going to move on to the 3D Mark tests, and we'll see how they do. Right, so we're going to move on to the wildlife test now. So previously we managed to get a score of 5828 on the Exynos on the left and 5734 for the Snapdragon. So let's see how they get on now. Okay, so we've had a tiny increase on both, nothing really to write home about, but it has increased. So we always wanna make sure that things are getting better rather than getting worse. So we're just going to go through the slingshot test here, just see what sort of FPS we can get on both of these. Because the scores get maxed out here, it's not worth looking at anything other than the actual final FPS results. Okay, so interestingly, the Snapdragon hasn't actually maxed out in its score this time around. Now, as you can see here, it's saying the Exynos version is too powerful. Now, this did max out last time, so I'm not quite sure what's happened. Now, the only difference being is that I did have the cooler on when it maxed out in the previous test, so I just went by the FPS in the end. But either way, it's got a score of 6274 here, which is, is actually worse than the February score, so not quite sure what's going on there. But the overall FPS, if we have a look, is still really good here. So we've got 85 FPS on the Snapdragon and 79 on the Exynos. For the physics test part two, we have 46 versus 51. And part three, we have 25 versus 27. So it's not bad really. Okay, so if we have a look at these screenshots that I've taken here, 
we can see that the Snapdragon is more consistent with a faster frame rate for at least the first half, I'd say, of the test. Whereas the Exynos does pick up a bit around the 90 second mark here, whereas the Snapdragon seems to drop down a bit. But overall, the results are actually quite comparable with each other, so that's interesting. So there we have it. The tests have been quite interesting this time, certainly comparing them to the previous month's tests. I'd say that the Exynos has improved the most in terms of performance. Certainly the Antutu getting over 700,000 is a crazy score, really. Um, I still can't quite believe that. I'm just going to have to load it back up and make sure that was correct. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely improved over the last couple of months. But hopefully the issue with throttling can be sorted out because it just seems ridiculous really. You're paying for a processor which you aren't getting the full potential out of. Whether you are going to use it or not, that's not the point. It's just the fact you should be able to if you wanted to. So those stress results, like I said, this is definitely worse, I would say, than the previous test. Whereas the Snapdragon still is running at a sort of optimum performance. So yeah, a bit of a shame, but it's certainly overall the Exynos has improved, which is good to see. And like I said, I haven't seen a score that high for the Exynos so far, so it's nice that it is actually able to break the 700,000 mark. So what sort of results are you getting on your phone? Are you getting anywhere close to this? Are you beating it? Obviously it does depend on ambient room temperature, it depends on many other factors, and obviously even the silicon in your chip will determine exactly how well it functions. Interestingly, the Snapdragon does still seem to be getting a bit hotter than the Exynos. Not quite sure why, but I have seen some comments in some of my other videos about their Snapdragons getting a bit warm. Not as many as the Exynos, however, that just seem to still be the leader in overheating. I haven't personally had many problems since the latest updates. I did have a few issues when I first got the phone with it overheating during WhatsApp calls and other things, but it has now all been fixed and it seems okay. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. If you want to become a member of the channel, click on the join button and that really helps out. I'd just like to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.